Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hey guys! Welcome to our free part series called Free Steps to Gladiator. In these series, we'll cover Step 1, building your character, Step 2, preparing for PvP, and Step 3, entering the arena. In the second part of this series, we'll be covering Step 2, preparing for PvP. In the second part of this Free Step series, we'll talk about preparing yourself for arena. In the previous video, we talked about talents, Azerite traits, and gear. And in this video, we'll talk about min-maxing your healing, mana efficiency, and getting the most out of your crowd control. The first step to min-maxing your healing and mana efficiency as a rest of Druid is to avoid overhealing. Your hot should be applied to all targets taking damage, but you want to avoid spamming regrows unless the target is about to die. The same goes for your hots. Keep all of your hots active, but refresh them at the last possible moment. Don't spam hots onto a target if they already have hots active that are not about to expire. This might seem very simple, but when learning to be as mana efficient as possible as a rest of Druid, this will be your first step. The next step in maximizing your healing and mana efficiency is managing your life bloom stacks. Focus Growth will allow you to keep 3 stacks of Life Bloom active on a target, significantly increasing its healing. You should look to refresh your Life Bloom stacks on a target when Life Bloom has 5 or less seconds left and is about to expire. This will cause Life Bloom to refresh its duration on a target, but still triggers its Bloom effect, giving you a quick mana efficient instant heal. Innovate should be used off cooldown when there's pressure on your team. This does not mean you should blindly use Innovate as soon as it comes off cooldown, but your goal is to time your Innovate for when the enemy team has a lot of pressure on your team. For example, when your team is getting cleaved down, when you have no holds active after coming out of CC, or when the enemy team has offensive cooldowns active. This will allow you to get all of your holds active and spam heal your team without having to worry about mana. When dealing with spread pressure, make sure to have two rejuvenations active on each target of your team that's taking damage. This will be your main source of AoE healing throughout the game and will avoid falling behind in healing. When you are under pressure instead, try to utilize your toolkit in the map to your advantage to save mana and cooldowns. Playing at a pillar allows you to avoid any CC and damage onto you, which means you have to spend less mana on healing yourself. Travel form, cat form and well charge can be used to kite the enemy team and gain distance from them, meaning you can avoid a ton of damage rather than trying to outheal it. If the enemy team does connect to you, bear form will be your most important tool. Guardian Affinity increases the value of your bear form even further by granting you Frenzy Regeneration, allowing you to do a ton of self-healing while you get trained down without spending any mana. Iron Bark should be used early and often to help you save mana. Iron Bark increases the healing taken from your hots by 20% on the target Iron Bark is used on when specced into Stone Bark, so using it when the target is still stable on health means you will have to heal less and spend less mana trying to top them back up. Iron Bark's short 45 second cooldown allows you to use it during most skill windows or even preemptively before getting caught in a CC chain. This means you can counter most offensive cooldowns and setups with Iron Bark, rather than spending mana on trying to outheal through offensive cooldowns of the enemy team. Moving on to the second part of this video, we'll talk about how you can use your crowd control. Let's start off with Bash. Bash can be used to set up CC chains for your team by stunning a target, which is usually the enemy healer allowing your DPS to follow up with any CC to extend the CC chain. Bash can also be used on the kill target during setups if you're playing with a spell cleave. This will lock down the kill target and stops them from line of sighting while your partners land CC on the enemy healer. If your DPS are unable to extend the CC chain, you can move in for a Cyclone instead. Cyclone will be one of your most useful tools in multiple situations when playing a Resto Druid. Cyclone can be used to cross the CD enemy team during setups by cycloning the off target which will allow your DPS to land their CC without having to worry about getting stopped. Cyclone can also be used to relieve pressure from your team and can even help you when playing mana efficient by cloning the enemy team on offensive cooldowns, or when your team is under a ton of pressure. 
This will allow you to slowly top your team back up, instead of having to waste a ton of mana on topping your team quickly. The difference between a good and a top level resto druid is how you manage your cyclones. Cyclone becomes one of the most deadly tools during your games if you know how to use it by swapping cyclones on targets with low health, or when the kill target has a defensive cooldown active. The cyclone can then be swapped to another target of the enemy team once DR resets, or when the defensive cooldown is about to expire, which will create a ton of pressure for your team. Keep in mind that spamming cyclone on the enemy team leaves you exposed to CC or getting swapped to, which will be discussed in the next video of this series. That's gonna be it for step 2 preparing for PvP. Don't forget to leave a plus kill if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next part of this series.